Hey guys, and welcome to my A-level physics revision video, continuing with section two, looking at quarks, the standard model, and conservation laws. Now, in the last video, we said that barons and mesons are actually made up of even smaller particles known as quarks. And quarks nicely explain some of the properties of barons and mesons, which couldn't un be understood before whereas the discovery of quarks actually helped simplify the particle zoo quite a lot. And there are actually six different qu types of quark, uh, but for ha the hadrons that are studied in this, in this course, there are a total of three quarks that you have to know about. So looking at them, we have the up quark, the down quark, and the strange quark. Now, each of these quarks has its corresponding antiparticle or, or its antiquark. So the up quark would have the anti up quark, the down quark would have the anti down, and the strange would have the anti strange. And these are only the only, th uh, well, technically six, but the only three different types of quark you need to know about. There are other, there are other quarks that are the top charm and bottom quark, but those three you don't need to know about. So let's draw a table showing all the different properties of the different types of the quark. So we have the up quark, down quark, strange, anti-up, anti-down, and anti-strange. So let's have a look at the charge. Well, the charge of an up quark is actually two thirds, and it will make a lot more sense why it's two thirds, as we'll see later. So we'll see as, as these quarks combine, they will actually form the particles that we know about, like the proton and the neutron. But the charge of the up quark is two thirds. Uh, and for a down quark, it's actually negative one third. This is of course, a like relative to the proton, the proton charge being one. And so this is actually, yeah, relative to the proton. Uh, and the strange quark also has a charge of negative one third. And for the corresponding antiquarks, they are simply the negative of these three right here. So the anti-up would have a charge of minus two thirds, the anti-down, one third and the anti strange one third. Now there's another quantity called baryon number. Uh, and baryon number is a quantity that is conserved in a lot of in all particle interactions. But I'll write down the baryon number for each of these for each of the quarks uh, one by one. So for the up quark, it is plus one third. The down quark, it's plus one third, and the strange quark, it's plus one third. And for the antiparticles, they are all minus a third. So there are lots of thirds coming coming into play right here, and I'll like soon explain why there are so many all these thirds coming along. And finally, we have this final quantity called strangeness. Now, strangeness is actually a property that, well, simply it tells you how many strange quarks are in a particle. So the up and the down would of course have strangeness of zero. So all those would have strangeness of zero. But weirdly, it's the strange quark actually has a strangeness of minus one rather than plus one, which is a weird convention, I know, but it's, it's, it's the way it is, I guess. And so the strange quark has a strangeness of minus one and the anti-strange has a strangeness of plus one. So those are the properties for the six quarks. These are the basic properties. You do have to know these, unfortunately. However, they are fairly easy to remember if you understand why they're all, they're all multiples of a third. So now let's have a look at how all these quarks combine to make hadrons. Well, we know that baryons and antibaryons, which include, of course, protons and neutrons, are composed of three different quarks. So this is any type of baryon. 
A baryon contains three different quarks. Whereas a meson, I'm gonna draw out a meson right here. A meson actually consists of a quark and an antiquark. So a mesons consist of two quarks, whereas baryons consist of three quarks. So let's go through some examples of that. So the proton consists of two up quarks and a down quark. Now, if we actually start to think about this in terms of the charges, you can see why all these charges are the way they are. Now, two lots of two up quarks give a total charge of two, two lots of two thirds, which is four thirds, plus the down quark that subtracts it by one third. So we have a total charge of one. So you can see how these charges are determined. So if we know that the charge on the proton is one, then two up quarks is two lots of two thirds, which is four thirds, plus the down quark, which reduces it by a third, gives a total charge of one. And similarly for the neutron, the neutron consists of an up quark and two down quarks. And again, if we think of this in terms of the charge, then the, the up quark will increase it by two thirds, but the two down quarks will decrease it by two lots of one third. So we actually get two thirds minus a third minus another third, giving zero, which is of course the charge on the neutron. And similarly for baryon number, if there are three quarks in, in well, both the neutron and the proton, then three lots of a third are gonna total one. Um, that's the same in both the up and the down quarks. They both have a baryon number of a third. And so put stick three of them together and you're gonna get uh, a baryon number of one in total. Now let's do one final example. Let's do the antiproton. Now the antiproton is of course very similar to the proton except all of the all of the particles, all the quarks become antiquarks. So we have the two lots of the anti-up and an anti-down. So if we think about this in terms of charges, we've got two lots of the anti-up. So two lots of minus two thirds is minus four thirds. And if we add the anti-down, well, the anti-down has a charge of plus a third, and that will give minus four thirds plus one third is minus one, which is of course what we know the charge of the antiproton to be. So you can see how the charge and the baryon number of these quarks add up together to give the charge on these three particles. So now let's have a look at the mesons. And for this, there's a nice little pattern you can do whilst drawing, drawing out the mesons. So we're gonna start off by drawing the pi meson right here. This is the neutral pion. Now here we have the pi plus meson and the pi minus meson. Now you'll see why I've drawn them like that in just a second. But what is the quark composition of pions? Well, the pi minus meson, that's of course negatively charged. So what quark antiquark pair can we get to make a negative charge? Well, if we have down anti up, then we can see that down gives a charge of minus a third, anti up minus two thirds. So that's gonna give a total charge of minus one, which is of course what we want here. Uh, similarly for the pi plus meson, we combine the up anti down quarks, then we're gonna get up, which is two thirds, and an anti down, which is one third, which two thirds plus one third is plus one. So that's the quark composition for the positively charged pion. Now for the neutral pion, there are actually three different types of neutral pion, which are actually composed of different particles, but they're just called the neutral pion. They're all called the same thing for some reason. So you can either have up, anti-up, down, anti-down, or strange, anti-strange. And all of those combinations give the neutral pion. So 
That is the quark composition of the pions. So now let's do the other meson that we know about, which is the kaon. We have the K plus meson. We of course have the K minus meson. And remember I said before, there are actually two different types of neutral kaons. So we have up here the K zero. And the other one, which I don't think I mentioned in the last video, this is actually, we give it a little bar uh, along the top, this, the other neutral K on, and it's the K bar zero. So there are four different types of K ons. So what did I say a K on was in the last video? Well, a K on is any particle that has some kind of strange quark. It could either be the strange quark or it could either be the anti-strange quark but as long as it's got one uh, some kind of strange quark it's a kaon otherwise of course it's just a pion pions of course don't have any kind of strangeness whereas kaons do have to have strangeness in order for them to be kaons so how can we get a positive kaon well if we combine the up and the anti-strange then you can see that up, charge of plus two thirds, anti-strange of one third, that gives two thirds plus a third, which is of course one. And for the negative kaon, we have the, if we combine the strange and quark and the anti-up quark, well, strange quark's got a charge of minus a third, and the anti-up quark has a strangeness of minus two thirds. So adding those two together, we get a charge of minus one. So that is the negatively charged kaon. Now for these two kaons, the, these two both have to be neutral. And you can actually see why there are two different types of kaons. There are actually two different type ways in which we can get them to be neutral. So if we combine down anti-strange, then we can see that the down is minus a third, but anti-strange is plus a third. Those two cancel out to give a neutral particle. Whereas the other way is, of course, you could have the strange anti-down. So there are actually two different ways in which you can get the K on. But as a convention, we say that the K naught is down anti-strange and the K bar naught is strange anti-down. So those are all seven different types of meson, and those are the quark combinations. And what you'll often see is all of these mesons combined in a nice little hexagon like that. Okay, my hexagon isn't very good, unfortunately, but that's uh, you might often see this little diagram. And a way in which you interpret the diagram is that chargeness, all the, all the negatively charged particles are all down here, so you've got the minus pi on the minus k on, and all the plus charge particles are all up here. And all particles down here are have a strangeness of minus one. All these particles have no strangeness, they're all pions and they don't have any strangeness. Okay, yeah, albeit this particle does have two strange quarks, but if you have a look, the strangeness of the strange quark is minus one, Add that to that one, no strangeness. Both the strange quarks cancel, so that that particle there has a strangeness of zero in total. And all these guys up here on this level have a strangeness of plus one because they have an anti-strange quark. So you can see from this that for baryons, you can see that the proton has an antiproton. So the up, up, down has the antiproton in which uh, instead of part, instead of all the quarks, they become antiquarks. They become their respective antiquark. Whereas you can actually see from this table of mesons that uh, the quark that anti mesons are actually their own particles. So if you think about the antiparticle of the pi zero, then you can see that the antiparticle of up anti up is just anti up up. You know, if we reverse both of those, so it's actually the they're actually themselves their own antiparticles. And what about this one here? You've got 
the ante up down, well, that is of course the pi minus meson. So you can see that they're all interchangeable. And one more example, just the K plus, the up anti strange, what's the anti particle of that? That's just the strange anti up. So that's actually the anti particle of that. And that's the anti particle of that. So mesons are actually themselves their own anti particles, which is kind of cool. So now let's go back to beta minus decay, in which we have a neutron decays into a proton and releases an electron and an anti-electron neutrino. This is beta minus decay right here. So what is this reaction? Now that we know the quark composition of the neutron and the proton, then how do we explain this in terms of quarks? Well, we know a neutron is an up, down, down quark, and a proton is an up, up, down quark. So what's actually happening? Well, we can clearly see that one of the down quarks in a neutron becomes an up quark. So we can simplify this reaction and saying that a down quark becomes an up quark plus an electron and an anti-electron neutrino. And we can actually draw a Feynman diagram of it. So what are the incoming particles? Well, we're now going to have three incoming particles now that we've, we've reduced the proton into its three quarks. And, well, two of them are going to remain unchanged. This up quark and this up quark are going to be the same before and after. So let's draw the up quark. The up quark goes in, the up quark goes out. The down quark goes in and the down quark goes out. Whereas the down quark, this down quark here goes in and this guy right here is going to undergo that reaction and out pops an up quark rather than a rather than the down quark that comes in it's going to change into an up quark as we've seen before and release these two leptons of course the electron and the anti electron neutrino of course so this is a Feynman diagram showing beta minus decay, except we've, we've reduced it into its quark composition. And for completeness, I'll draw the diagram out for beta plus decay. So in beta plus decay, we know that a proton gets converted into a neutron plus a positron and a normal electron neutrino. So, What's this in terms of the quark composition? Well, a proton is an up, up, down. A neutron is an up, down, down. So what changes? Well, an up quark gets converted into a down quark. So up quark gets converted into a down quark. And of course, releasing the electron and the anti-electron neutrino. And for the Feynman diagram of this, we're similarly going to have the up quark going in, the up quark, same up quark going out. The down quark goes in and the same down quark leaves. Whereas now we have the other up quark in the proton. But this guy, he's going to get changed into a down quark. Via the weak interaction, I've got to add, of course, the W minus boson. And up here, it's going to be the W plus boson. And the two leptons leaving the electron neutrino and the positron. So this is uh, the diagram for beta plus decay, except we put it in terms of quarks rather than just electrons and or rather than just uh, with the neutrons and protons like we did before.